A veteran Savage Raider, or even just a veteran player in general, may find it entirely obvious why optimized openers do things like not always using all of your cooldowns immediately, not using a gap closer to pull a boss, or even using cooldowns before the fight even starts. It might be obvious why optimization involves stockpiling resources once you see the light and know what to do with it, but these things aren't entirely obvious to newer players, or perhaps even somewhat casual players. Now, most of these tricks are also helpful at improving your performance in casual content, allowing you to beat the bosses faster and more easily. These tricks can sometimes lead to a rotation that just feels like it fits together more naturally. It might actually be easier to play optimally. And so, in this video, we will be covering a few common or uncommon mistakes and then demonstrating how an optimization trick both performs better, why that is, and how to incorporate it into your playstyle. That might sound a bit backwards, but I'm sure you'll get it once we get started. Number 1. Pulling with a gap closer. If you are a tank, or even a melee DPS, you may feel extremely incentivized to engage combat specifically with a gap closer. These gap closers are, in most cases, abilities, and so OGCDs, meaning that this option will delay your first weapon skill, GCD, by around half a second and then some. This might be a rather minor detail, and surely, being in melee range of the boss more quickly is always better, right? Well, for a DPS, or even a healer, hello Sage, using a gap closer when the fight is already underway, should you actually have the opportunity, and it would help, then in most cases it's entirely beneficial. For specific examples, Reaper and Monk both commonly use their gap closers to engage combat, and while less common, ninjas can as well. What these three DPS jobs have in common regarding their gap closers, however, is that they don't do damage. Samurai usually won't have the resources to use a gap closer outright unless it is in a dungeon situation, and dragoons tend to highly prefer to keep their gap closers to use in the opener burst itself. But there is one key reason why dragoons might prefer this. Why would a tank not want to use a gap closer to pull with? Well, there is not one, not two, but three different reasons for this. The first reason is that, as tank gap closers do damage, using your gap closer after your damage buff is activated, or even better, during raid buffs, is a damage gain. This means that our gunbreaker would rather save rough divide for when no mercy is active. No, that does not mean you should use no mercy before pulling, we'll get to that. Paladin would rather save intervene for fight or flight, and Dark Knight would very much prefer to use plunge after dark side is active, at the very least. Warrior is incentivized to delay Onslaught till after Searching Tempest is active as well. The second reason is that, in most cases, leading with a GCD attack will mean that the GCD lands at 0 seconds of combat. Leading with an OGCD will instead, at minimum, postpone your first GCD to around 0.625. Sometimes, tanks will use an OGCD like Provoke to pull with anyway, but the main reasoning here is that, as you only get one GCD every 2.5 seconds or so, Maximizing the number of GCDs you get over the course of a fight is going to maximize your damage, even if using an OGCD sooner will put that action on cooldown to recharge sooner. As such, in most cases, you want to use a GCD as your first action, even if that is a ranged attack. The third reason is related to positioning the boss, and is also the reason why jobs like Dragoon tend to not really care that much about using their gap closers for gap closing in the opener. By sprinting into combat, instead of snapping to the boss with a gap closer, you give the rest of your team a much better signal of when combat starts, and allows the melee DPS players to time their attacks just behind yours, instead of you dashing in, leaving everyone else confused and scrambling. Sprinting in, as well as using ranged attacks, also allows you far more freedom to position the boss, should this be necessary. Many bosses preferably are pulled to the center of the room for everyone's convenience, although a lot of bosses these days will jump to the center of their own free will as well. Combining these three reasons, while perhaps sounding somewhat backwards, the generally most effective way to pull, in particular as a tank and partially as a DPS, is to sprint in 
Lead with your first GCD, which when needing to position the boss, can be a ranged attack at times. And then consider when is the best time to use a gap closer, which often will be just for damage during raid buffs. In most cases where it would matter, saving the running time towards the boss before combat begins doesn't really matter, but saving time anywhere else. By, for example, letting your DPS start their attack more closely to you does matter a lot more. Number 2. Damage buffs before combat starts. Logically, the sooner you use a cooldown, whether it is a damage buff or an attack, the sooner you get to use it again. And technically, if you use a damage buff and then immediately follow it up with an attack, you are getting value out of it. The problem here is that this strategy attempts to maximize the amount of uses of a cooldown, rather than maximizing the value of the cooldown itself. If you aren't actually in position to make use of the effect of the cooldown immediately after it is activated and functioning, there is no reason to actually use it yet. One somewhat common example of how this is done includes Gunbreakers using No Mercy followed by Rough Divide to engage combat. If you wanted to start your No Mercy window with Keen Edge, you probably don't, then that would be perfectly fine, especially if your GCD is slow enough that late weaving No Mercy makes no difference anyway. Other surprisingly common examples include using raid buffs before combat starts. This means red mages using Embolden, summoners using Searing Light, bards using Battle Voice, and sometimes Radiant Finale in dungeons. Reapers using Arcane Circle, Dragoons using Battle Litany, Monks using Brotherhood, Astrologians using Divination, and Dancers using Technical Finish with no target. Although that one is really rare. Most of these stem from the logical reasoning that 1. Using the raid buff sooner means we get to have it again sooner. And 2. By using my buff earlier, it'll cover everyone's opening attack, which surely will be big. The reason why it doesn't really work like that is for two common reasons. The first one is that a bunch of jobs actually really like having a few GZDs to start before blasting. This means that when you use your raid buff early, or even your personal damage buff early, you are demanding either your team or even yourself to awkwardly make the most of the buff while it is there, which certainly isn't the most effective way to do it. Besides, the buff will be here again in a minute, or two minutes anyway. Delaying it by a few seconds to be ready for it isn't going to change that. Generally, optimized openers tend to place 15 second raid buffs around 7 seconds into a fight. And longer raid buffs than this often come out a bit sooner with the aim of making sure all buffs overlap for at least 15 seconds. Some of the best examples of why we do it like this is because warriors and Dark Knights need around 3 regular GZs to set up Warrior Surging Tempest, or to build enough gauge to use Living Shadow for Dark Knight. An incredible overlap here is that Dancers opening with Standard Finish into Technical Step, the 4 steps and then Technical Finish, naturally apply Technical Finish's buff right around the 7 second mark. As such, the motivation for Dancers to prepare Technical Finish beforehand is unnecessary. The second reason is that if you use your raid buffs before combat starts, you aren't even sure when combat will start, meaning that several seconds of your buff might have already passed by that point. And no, you should also not use your raid buff as an indicator that you are ready. By making sure you use your raid buff, or even personal damage buff, when you are already in the middle of combat and attacking, you make sure there is the highest probability you get the most value out of the buff itself, and that your team does as well. There are a few exceptions to this rule, and they typically apply to buffs that only activate a set number of times. For example, Samurai's Mech Yoshisui can only be used on 3 weapon skills, and that takes, from start to finish, around 5-6 to six seconds to do. So if you know when combat starts, you can use Mech Yoshisui quite a while in advance. An even better example is Black Mage's Sharp Cast, which is spent on a single spell and typically on the second spell in the opener, meaning again that you only need around 5 seconds. Number 3. Cooldown Order 
For some jobs, you don't have that many cooldowns, making this somewhat trivial, but for those with multiple cooldowns, especially those that increase your damage, the exact order can be very significant for your performance. A very simple example to follow is Paladin. Do you use Requiescent or Fight or Flight first, or does it not matter? It used to be true that the order didn't really matter, because Fight or Flight used to only boost physical damage. And Requiescent does magic damage, explained by the deals unaspected damage bit. But as Fight or Flight boosts all your damage now, using Fight or Flight first makes Requiescent do more damage, and overall the order makes no difference for your rotation. A very classic example of cooldown order is whether to use Devilment or Technical Step and finish first as a dancer. The logical reasoning for choosing Devilment first is that Technical Finish is, by a significant margin, the dancer's strongest single hit. So why wouldn't you want that to have a bonus directed and crit chance? Well, the better choice is actually to use Technical Finish first and then weave Devilment immediately after. This is for a few reasons, so let's go over that for this example. Technical step takes around 3 GZDs worth of time to actually perform, meaning that while the single hit is 1200 potency, it is closer to 400 potency per GZD. While it is quite a bit of math to cover every single case, the filler combos are worth over 300 potency per GZD. There is also the consideration that Saber Dance is 480 potency and that you have all of the fan dances you can accumulate throughout a fight to spend as well. Usually, you can spend most of your OGZDs and resources easily within 12 or 13 seconds, so by that argument, Devil Mending Technical Finish is a benefit, right? Well, having 20 seconds of both a 5% damage bonus and 20% more crit chance and direct hit chance is better than having 7 seconds of crit and direct hit, 13 seconds of both and 7 seconds of 5% damage bonus. So you would prefer to overlap these more cleanly. This is even further emphasized since Devilment is shared with your dance partner, meaning they will benefit more from both buffs overlapping more cleanly. For these reasons, the classic dancer opener tends to be standard step to finish, then technical step to finish, and then devilment. Of course, using flourish somewhere too. This same kind of idea applies to most jobs and the timing of raid buffs as well. If you know your team is planning their raid buffs that last 15 seconds, around 7 seconds into a fight, then you can coordinate that. A Dragoon wants to use Lance Charge and Dragon Sight as close to each other as possible to make sure they overlap with the same actions. But because Battle Litany's duration is shorter, it is used after, such that you are sure to get 15 seconds of Lance Charge, Dragon Sight and Battle Litany. Naturally, as Battle Litany is a raid buff, it kind of dictates where Lance Charge and Dragon Sight goes as a side effect. Number 4. Two early defensive cooldowns. There are two examples of this, so let's cover them one at a time. The more egregious case is when you see a tank use Rampart and then they start pulling. Now, why would that be a bad thing? Similar to how using a damage buff before combat starts can lead to losing out on potential damage, using a defensive cooldown before enemies actually start attacking you leads to a loss of potential damage prevented. If instead you used Rampart when the enemies have actually reached you and they're doing as much damage as they possibly can, then Rampart would be more valuable. There can of course be some exceptions to this, like if you're doing a very large pull involving a lot of ranged mobs. Then it might be handy to use a defensive while running. However, if this means you will be lacking a defensive later down the line, then it might not be worth the hassle. The second example is more a matter of optimization. You see the balls wind up for a tank buster. You know it is a tank buster either from prior experience or from the red arrow marker, but the boss seems to be taking quite a while to do it. You immediately use your defensive cooldowns, such as Holy Sheltron or Heart of Corundum or even the Blackest Knight. By the time the tank buster actually lands, several seconds have already passed. In the worst cases, the additional damage reduction from Holy Sheltron or Heart of Corundum might have already worn off. But even if that was not an issue, remember that while the boss is casting, they aren't doing much else, right? 
So if you are fighting a single target and they start casting, as long as your defensive cooldown is up before the attack resolves, that is all you need. While this seems kind of irrelevant since what you really care about is reducing the tank buster itself, and that will happen just the same anyway, the later in the cast you apply your defensive cooldowns, the more potential auto attacks after the tank buster you might also reduce, which is just free bonus. The best example of this is Warrior using Blood Wedding, where you'd want to late weave Blood Wedding as late as possible so you can heal from as many attacks as possible after the tank buster. Number 5. Properly Weaving. I know, this might sound obvious to some players, but really, properly weaving OGCDs between your GCDs is going to win you more damage in the long run, even if just mashing out all of your cooldowns first is very enticing. Imagine that your GCD itself is like a cooldown that just so happens to share cooldown with like half of your toolkit. Naturally, you'd want to use this as much as possible. Prioritizing shorter cooldowns earlier means they will come up again sooner, meaning you get more of them. Delaying a 2 minute cooldown a GCD or 2 is much less likely to cost you a use of it than delaying a 2.5 second cooldown will, as it will cost you a use every 2.5 seconds, obviously. I have two particular examples of how this mistake can sometimes crop up, so let's take them one at a time. The first one is not uncommon to see with Dragoons and is related to jumps. As Dragoons Life of the Dragon is tied to the use of jump or high jump and both of these are arranged, many new Dragoons feel incentivized to use this immediately when they enter combat as like an opening attack. Often this is further underlined by then using Spine Shatter Dive afterwards to close the gap. Sometimes this happens after Mirage Dive has been used as well. The full combination of High Jump into Mirage Dive into Spine Shatter Dive can cost you up to 2 seconds of delay on your first GCD. Not to mention the damage loss of using these cooldowns without the Power Surge buff from Disembowel, similar to the issue with Gunbreakers leading with Rough Divide. This leads to a situation where Dragoons are, outside of niche exceptions, incentivized to dash up to the target normally, use a GCD, True Thrust, and then considering their OGCDs. Because the value of the GCD is simply too great to delay it any more than absolutely necessary. The second example can be a bit harder to tell at a glance, but is related to Black Mage weaving. At lower levels, sometimes you simply have to weave while your GCD is fully readied because that's how casting works at times. However, at higher level, especially max level, you have enough instant spells available that you can find space to weave something when you need to. Aside from some niche exceptions, again, doing something like placing your ley lines or using amplifier at all, should be scheduled during an instant cast you had anyway, as otherwise the weave itself costs you around half a second and then some. On the one hand, you want to use amplifier as quickly as possible to get it back on cooldown. However, delaying it by a second or two is unlikely to lead you to losing additional amplifiers over the course of a fight. However, delaying your fire 4 is 100% guaranteed to cause you to lose out on future fire forecasts. To maximize the damage you can do with any job, make sure that the GCD is always spinning. After that comes OGCDs. Now, that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support me and my channel, you can let the YouTube algorithm know by liking the video, leaving a comment, subscribing and hitting the bell to get notified when next I post a video. And if you want to give even more support than that, you can also become a member of the channel like these wonderful people here. Fun fact, Paladin used to, before their rework, have an opener that used fight or flight around 17 seconds in advance. This was done to align the Paladin's looping rotation so the strongest part of it landed in raid buffs, while still getting value out of this physical damage buff. Fortunately, this is no longer useful with the rework.